you know i can tell you there was a time wherein i i grew my mustaches you know we we had a term uh, called movember you know in uh, in all you know us and european companies wherein you are not supposed to shave for like a month or so uh, during that month my wife and my kids they they disowned me uh, that you know who are you <laughs> How are things, Shivani? Hi, sir. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you doing? Sir, I'm going to start the month. I'm going to build a little bit of confidence. I'm going to start the revision for the entire week. Good. Very good. I'm impressed. Vanchika, ma'am. How are things? Sir, team, team. सेम सेम वो तो मुझे पता है सब जितने मेरे शरारती बच्चे हैं ना सबके मौक मुझे कल परसों में ही आए हैं एनी वेज आई वॉज टेलिंग शांतम दैट यू नो द वे वी हैव प्लान अपकमिंग थ्री डेज वॉट आई इंटेंड टू डू इज दैट विल बी हैविंग ए सेशन टूडे विच विल बी ए रिविजन सेशन और सेशन टूमोरो अगेन विल बी रिविजन सेशन वेर एन विल ट्राई टू कवर i would say all the broader aspects or important aspects day 3 which is tuesday evening we'll go through the uh, pre seen material and uh, during this week itself you all should get your mocks also so i'm hoping that by wednesday thursday everyone should have all their mocks agar mujhe zarurat lagegi to we'll certainly have a call also we'll have a discussion on that too and then we'll pick it up from there just to make sure that everyone is aware of in terms of you know what is really coming your way कल के सेशन बिल्कुल मिलेगी रिकॉर्डिंग सारे सेशंस की मिल जाएगी रिकॉर्डिंग सारे सेशंस की मिल जाएगी द ओनली थिंग इज की अगर कोई बात करनी होगी देन इट वुड नॉट बी पॉसिबल बिकॉज यू नो लाइव सेशन इज ऑलवेज हेल्पफुल फॉर दैट बट इन केस अगर आपको कुछ लगेगा तो डू व्हाट्सएप मी एंड देन वी कैन टॉक ऑन दैट All right. So should we start? I think. Uh, where is that that gentleman? Uh, you know what was his name? Uh, there was a gentleman who was asking me to to take sessions, but what was his name? Pranab. Pranab. Where is Pranab? Call him. No. If if somebody can call him, such hang. Can you call him? He should also join, na. it is important in the meanwhile we'll start sashank and then you know let him come in you know whenever possible is that clear all right Hi everyone good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you are my name is pankaj dhingra and as you all know me by now i am a proud fintrammer welcome welcome friends welcome to the acc strategic business leader grand revision for the march 2024 attempt we going to be rocking my friend in the coming 3 days and I, there is a reason why i'm saying that we'll be rocking because there is plethora of things that we'll be talking there are many things that we really have to really skim through and and really get into the details of it so as to ensure that you know we really have a command over all of those areas all of those you know i would say i would say things and all of those some specific and important topics that examiner really wants us to be sure of what i have done is and you know you would see that in the coming 3 days of time what i have done is that i have ensured that on one side you are able to get the complete hold of the important topics and on the other hand you should get the glimpse or i would say the 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 understandings of what the examiner has been looking from you so we'll be covering various examiner reports various technical articles various important relate i would say exam important related areas and we'll also circle on various tips and techniques in order to really excel there and kill the exam in the best possible way that is something i'm really targeting and that is something i'll be really looking forward to what just for the you know just for the sake that you know we really have this discussion more holistic and non you know i would say non uh, 
uh, uh, I would say without in a, without in any disturbed fashion. What we'll do is that you know in case you have any questions, please note it down, comment it down, you know put it on the chat. We'll be taking it you know in the end of the session. No questions will be taken during the sessions per se. Is that clear? Yes, sir. All right. Moving on, guys. You know what we have on screen now is something that I relish in terms of seeing because all of these folks are now owing me the cup of coffee as we go forward. All of these guys are, you know, in India, outside India, and I'm really proud that, you know, all of them owe me a cup of coffee because they've really come up with the flying, flying colors in their exams. And I'm super excited to be there in their, you know, to be in their country, in their state, to have my share of coffee from them. Excellent. I love this. All right, moving on guys, you know, just for the folks who are seeing us for the first time, I really want to circle this back to ensure that you really know about Fentram as to who we are and what we do the way we do. Fentram Global is a global learning platform for various qualifications, including ACCA, CPA, CFP, you know, uh, I would say CMA, IFRS, and now Enrolled Agent 2. We have various qualifications available under one umbrella, and you can certainly, certainly see us to be a one-stop shop for all your ACCA needs, right from registration to the coaching, to the mentoring, and to the examination. Everything is being conducted and being delivered under one roof, which is something to be relished. We have a house of professionally qualified faculties who are not only qualified from the, from the standpoint of qualification that they're really covering, but they also have the relevant industry experience because they have worked in the industry for long, long years just to ensure that they are you know, really having the complete grasp of the things and they're really able to deliver to the best extent possible. We are very well adapted to the news and the you know, upcoming or the changed syllabus areas that really come your way to make sure that you, know, you are fully equipped when you're, you're you know, hitting your exam in, in the best possible way. What you also get from us is you know, the regular career guidance and of course you know, the mantras that you really need to you know, flourish on or, or work on. We'll be you know, certainly talking on, on all of those areas, all of those things, even in our discussion, in an, even in our chats, you know, we, we really get, get, get to discuss all of those things, all of those areas. And of course, it is not only ending over there, but it is effectively taking you to, you know, you, for you to really get a job. We also help people, help students, our students, and of course, students' fraternity at large in terms of they being placed at various, various, I would say, national and international you know forums or companies as we call it in terms of they getting the right and the and the appropriate job that they really aspire for and towards the end i should not you know uh, miss on this saying this miss on saying this which is think acca think been trapped Coming about, you know, and talking about myself, you know, and being being modest over there, I'm a qualified chartered accountant and a CPA from US, uh, having more than 20 years of experience in various corporates. So I have headed the finance of Wipro for a long, long time. I was the head of finance for uh, BlackRock, one of the largest asset managers firm in the world. I have headed the finance for Boston Consulting for a long, long time. And of course, you know, while I have been doing all of this, I have been very close to the curriculum, very close to the qualifications because I have been teaching all of these qualifications for the last 20 plus years now, be it ACCA, be it CPA, be it CA as the case may be. I have given my WhatsApp number over here guys in case anybody wants to reach out to us, we will be more than happy to really have a chat, have a discussion and of course take it to the level that we would want. All right. I'll be taking ahead now, I'll be going ahead and covering in terms of, you know, showing you what we will be covering in the, in the session or in these three sessions. We'll be definitely touching upon, you know, some of the issues that are being observed. And for that, you know, I have really picked up one of the latest examination report, which is December 2023 exam. I really picked that up for a discussion. We'll be talking through that and we'll be telling you that, you know, where examiner has been specifically highlighting that these are the areas, my friend, you should really work upon and not to miss on that. All right, we'll be talking on various important syllabus area topics today and tomorrow. I have specifically cherry picked this, my friend, to ensure that you're not missing on some of the important and very important piece that I would say from the examination perspective are always there in the exam. So we'll be touching upon that. We will also get into some of the key technical articles and this is more to give you a, I would say, a bird's eye view or a refresher kind of a thing to make sure that you are there uh, to really cater to all of those areas, cater to all of those topics to make sure that you're not losing out on that. While we do that, we'll also touch upon various professional skills and not only the professional skills, but we'll also talk on how should you be applying the professional skills 
on to the examination questions. We'll be talking on that. We'll also touch upon the formats. Very important. One of the one of the professional skill that is communication. Specifically deal with various formats that you need to follow. Be it email, be it your press release, be it your report, be it your memo and whatnot. You have to know the format of each and every every I would say requirement that really comes your way in the exam and we will certainly try to refresh that. We'll also talk about various past examination questions. You know, latest December 2023 is really coming your way right now. We'll be deep diving into it, understanding you know, where things are really going not well for the students so that we are learning from that mistake and not doing that. Towards the end, you know, we'll certainly have a Q&A session in case there is anything that you really want me to pick it up. We'll certainly talk on that. Mock exam, any which ways has been, you know, have been circulated to all the Fintramers. You already have it. Some of you have already given me. We'll be, you know, certainly, circle, certainly circling back on that once we've checked it and we'll be having a detailed performance review for all of you. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Last but not the least is the is the pre-seen material discussion for the March 2024 attempt, which is coming your way. Tuesday, we'll be having that discussion. We'll be having a detailed chat on what all is happening from the pre-seen material standpoint, what all things that you really need to be sure, you really need to be aware of from the pre-seen material standpoint. We'll be talking on that. I'm still working on it, and we'll be certainly talking on that and getting into the details of it. One thing I really want to go and give you as a caveat, do not forget that, that these revision sessions are not the replacement of the full course preparation that you need to do. So anybody who is just seeing us for the first time and going you know, through our revision session, please make sure revision sessions are certainly refresher for you, certainly will help you in terms of memorizing and understanding the context and areas in the best possible way. But this is not a replacement of the whole syllabus area that you really need to take, take, take care of. Do not forget that, very important. All right. Moving on, my friend, we'll be starting off with the learning from the latest examiner report issued by ACCA. Just to give you a color and, you know, this is more to circle back and, and give you context. ACCA is, is, is really helpful to the student fraternity at large because they not only help in terms of giving you various mock exams on their uh, portal, but they also help you in terms of understanding what has gone wrong in the previous exam. An examiner report is the, is the testimony to the fact that ACC really comes up and shares with you that boss, you know what, some of the exams that have happened in past, and of course the examiner report is available for various exams, these exams had these, these issues. So that students can understand that, oh, 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 these are the mistakes that are happening and I should not be repeating that, I should not be doing that, I should not do this mistake. And that is the beauty of it, my friend. That is what you really need to, you know, I would say appreciate and understand. And of course, somewhat, somewhere, uh, you know, be, be proud of being part of an AC, you know, being part of the ACCA fraternity and being an ACCA student. You would love that fact that ACCA is so helpful in terms of taking care of all of those areas, all of those things, because it really helps you know that these are the things you should be certainly aware because these are the mistakes that some folks have done so that you are not doing that and you are not repeating that, which is excellent, my friend. I think this is something to be relished, to be learned from. Moving on to the background of the question that you got in the December 2023 attempt. It was a question of NC Tech that was a cloud services company. NC Tech is a cloud service company and the candidate role that was being given to you was of a consultant who was working for Chelwood Consultant, some of the consulting organization they would have really deployed for giving them suggestions. Okay, good. And they were advising on the strategic initiatives or strategic issues that this cloud service company, NC Tech, is really facing at that point in time. Very good, sir. I get that, sir. The pre-seen material that was provided covered two important aspects. On one hand, it really covered the countries, the country, the, the name, fictitious name that was given to that country was Farland. So the, it, it had two components, the pre seen material had two components. One component dealt with what Farland has from the cloud service industry standpoint. So it, it really spoke on, you know, various things that were there in the industry, various things that were there, you know, that were there from the standpoint of country and how things are really happening in that country as far as the cloud service industry is concerned. That was first piece of it. The second piece of it was about NC Tech. So they really gave the background information about NC Tech in detail in the pre-seen material. Is that clear? 
yes sir when the student went into the examination room you know what he got as a question there on the exam day there were some additional information that were provided and that is what i'm disclosing and displaying it over here which is they got an email from the chair that was for the investigating a data breach that happened in nc tech okay sir i get that sir next thing that they got was they got a, an extract from the it security manual talking about the securities talking about the issues talking about the lapses talking about the direction talking about you know the future forward and so on so forth this effectively you know gave a student a perspective that you know they really have to understand the security breaches that are happening and what the manual really says for it all right good sir i get that then they had an article from the farland business review magazine on the talent management okay i get that and then they have a board discussion on the recent client survey these were the four exhibits i would say that were being given in the exam once you have read what the farland industry country you know on the whole is all about what once you have read you know what this cloud service industry in farland is all about once you have read what nc tech is all about in the pre seen material now you have these four exhibits my friend that talk on you know the chair investigating the data breach issue extract on the security manual of it okay an article from the fairland business review on the talent management and the board discussion on the recent client survey excellent i love this exam for this my friend because this actually pushes you it throws you into the sea wherein you would be certainly exposed to when you would join any corporation when you get into any corporation all of these issues all of these areas all of these discussions are on ongoing basis and i love esbel exam for that because esbel exam really test your actual skills in terms of dealing with with these scenarios i love it is that clear yes sir coming on to the overall analysis now this is something i have specifically all of these slides that you're seeing over here i have picked up my friend from the latest exam report if someone wants to go over there they can <coughs> certainly go on the acc website and see that i'll be providing the link of this report in my video today so that you can just click and go it and, and go and check it out over there is that clear yes sir now the overall analysis what does it really says overall analysis says that the candidate made insufficient use of information that was presented in the exhibit to support their answer you know what they did they effectively have not used the in the all of the exhibit and the background and the pre seen material to write the answers they have only cherry picked few of the areas which was not holistic examiner didn't like that okay i get that sir some of the candidates continue to answer the task that they wish they had set rather than the task that actually you know was there in the exam now this is the beauty of it the intent why you know uh, with which the examiner comes up with the pre seen material was that examiner wanted you that some of the material you should read at your home and some of the material you would read in the exam and then answer that you know but what has started happening is pre seen material is been taken as in a way that st students are thinking of now to spot questions from the pre seen material and since they have really got that into their mind that this is the question that will come in the exam they have started preparing the answers and then they go into the exam and write it despite the fact despite the fact that that answer is not been not been there or the, the question is not been there in the exam for which that answer is made off so which is pathetic somehow it is pathetic that you are not even observing that what is being asked in the exam and you have your own preconceived notion that this is what would be asked and you are writing that without even seeing as to what is there in the exam or you are just padding up the information over there for no right reason absolutely absolutely wrong bizarre i would say please do not do that please do not do that i have been saying that in class i have been saying that like a broken record do not do not consider pre seen material you know as as the end of what you would get to see in the exam pre seen material is the cursory information main information is in the exhibits in the exam combine those exhibits information with the pre seen material combine that and then answer that do not do not forget that is that clear yes sir some of the i would say other issues that we observed was rote learning you know some of the people they did uh, 
they did the rote learning of or topics of the models and they applied it there without having the right context being applicable there so in the context in which you are applying a model be it portus diamond be it, be it bcg matrix be it uh, you know uh, ensof or whatsoever if you are applying that and without having any context being available in the question you are not going to be getting any marks please do not do that rote learning is not going to be helping you in any which ways i have been saying this and all the fintramers knows this day in and day out that i keep saying this strategic business leader exam is the most common sensical exam in the world please apply your common sense while writing the examination questions there is no rocket science here you should not be you know applying models unnecessarily is that clear yes sir poor command on english you know i i saw this for the first time in the examiner report but i did uh, i was surprised honestly that examiner came up with this that you know what he observed is that students did not had right command they were not able to articulate or communicate or pass on the right message to the examiner which is something i don't see uh, you know we should be doing in any which way is possible but if examiner is saying there is certainly a need to improve upon that and work upon that so there has to be a learning from it in case some of us you know need some help there please please look out for that because examiner is really pointing on on that the main weakness was the failure to consider the context uh, of the case in the exam some of them you know did the copy and pasting of the pre seen material or the exhibit information into the answer without having any right reason for it i have been saying that categorically my friend categorically please please do not do that is that clear yes sir now he came up with some specific areas that i really want to talk on candidates who failed you know he has given some specific pointers in the examiner report so i really want to call out call this out so that you are you know somewhat somewhere be prepared with it candidates who failed had the had an issue of having lack of development uh, of points they were not able to they were not able to give the right points to the examiner that was needed for that particular requirement it was a big time issue lack of analysis skill was something that that uh, that was being observed i think when he, when he says lack of analysis skill i personally feel that what you have not done is that you have not taken the context from pre seen material and from all the exhibits he expects you that you know the entire geeta and then you are writing it you know the entire bible and then you are writing it if you are only writing the things from one or two chapters he will certainly certainly call out that you have an analysis issue over there please do not do that not answering the question that were being asked pathetic please do not do that poor level of technical knowledge i think you know you really have to brush up all the models all the areas coming two days are going to be a roller coaster for you do not forget that lack of commercial acumen and the professionalism commercial acumen has been has been the area where examiner has been categorically asking things again and again highlighting things again and again that you know guys you need to improve on your commercial acumen anything that you suggest has to have the practical possibility of it commercial viability of it do not do not forget that you have to have the understanding of the industry understanding of the company that you're dealing with then you have to what provide a solution which is practically possible and commercially feasible we have taken that my friend in the last class we have really dealt with it we have spoken on it please do not forget that all right wasting time making irrelevant points do not do not make irrelevant points not needed failure to provide everything that the requirement specified please 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 read the question carefully we have been talking on this in any and every question revision boot camp you have to read the question very carefully and remember we have given you the tips to read the exam questions in terms of understanding that this and this is the requirement and both of its needs to be answered taking into consideration the professional skills and the format do not forget that do not forget the raft p raft p is your mantra to clear the svel exam my friend and of course get me my filter coffee is that clear yes sir a specific comment that i really want to highlight over here which was very hurting to me but i i do want to you know um, um, somehow call it out over here because you should certainly be knowing it was concerning to see that some candidates failed to read the task requirement carefully resulting them in not answering the question that were being asked or not not answering the whole requirement this demonstrate poor examination technique and lack of professionalism see he is killing you for two points 
is not giving you a technical point and is also giving you a dent on your professional skill marks if you're not reading the requirement carefully. We are Fintrammers, sir. We are going to be rocking in the exam. We are not going to be doing this mistake. I'm loving you, my friend, for that. I am really loving you. Please do not do this mistake because I have to surely ensure my cup of coffee. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, some of the suggestions that I have in, you know, in for you, you know, for you to write your exam, I think most of it I've already covered, but some of the things that I really ensure, want to ensure that you're really not missing on to it is that always structure your, your answer logically. First thing first should be very important thing, then the next, then the next, and then the next, and last should be the least important thing. Do not forget that. Balance in terms of depth uh, and the breadth of the points that you're making. Always see number of marks and then, you know, define and decide as to how much you really need to write. We have spoken on that in the division bootcamp in terms of, you know, what should we, you be following. You know, cover the most important points first. Do not pad out the information or, you know, or do not give him information that is not needed. Please do not do that. Not making same points more than two times. Professional skills are to be surely demonstrated. Analysis skill, commercial acumen skill, he has been pointing out again and again. Please do not do that or do not miss on that. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Very important, guys, that we're not missing on these areas. And it is all the more, all the more important that we're learning from the mistakes of others and not missing on to it so that, you know, we are coming off with the flying colors in the exam, come what may. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Should we move on and start off with the proceedings of the day? Yes, sir. You know what? Day one effectively now starts where we'll deep dive into various revision area topics, various things that I really want you to know. Please, please, please stay, stay tight. You know, we'll be having a roller coaster ride to ensure that we are not missing on various important topics, various important areas in the exam. And we should be able to hit the exam come what may. What is really important over here, my friend, is that the first slide says that you have to know the syllabus of the SBL exam. The strategic business leader, my friend, and I can tell you this is the mistake that many of the students have been doing, and that is that they are not referring to the syllabus areas in the entirety. Do not cherry pick the syllabus area. Again, you know, I've just given a link over here. You have to go on to the ACC website. Now, you know, this may not be relevant for the folks who are just appearing and they've already done the syllabus areas, but this can be very important for the folks who are just starting their SPL journey. They should know that this is the Gita, this is the Bible that you need to follow. Go on to the ACC website, download the syllabus, and of course, know that this is what the syllabus area is. Of course, FinTram really helps you out in terms of, you know, knowing what you really need to know from the examination standpoint. But you should also see what is there on the ACC website. What you have, if you're doing the self-study, having the right syllabus area, the complete syllabus areas, and having a complete grasp of it is going to be the game changer. Do not, do not really forget on that. All right, moving on, my friend, we have the important point to be considered. That is, what is the SBL exam all about? Now, if you really see from the examination standpoint, from the SBL examination standpoint, SBL exam is for 100 marks, but out of those 100 marks, 80 marks are being given for the writing of the exam and 20 marks is being given how you write the exam. What does that mean, sir? Now, if you're appearing for this exam for the first time, you should know this. That examiner would only expect you to write for 80 marks. 20 marks are only and an, 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 an only given to you if you have written the way it is expected. There are you know, professional skills that you need to follow in the exam and we'll talk on that towards the end. You know, there are various professional skills that you really need to demonstrate and answer in the exam. And those professional skills are the ways or you know, are the hows of the exam. So those professional skills will effectively tell you this is how you should be answering in the exam. So for example, if it is an analysis skill, it will tell you what you should be doing. While you should be only, you will be only answering, you know, what is the need of the question is, but four marks or like five marks, whatever that number is, four marks is effectively given to you in that question for the purpose of demonstrating that you have written it the way it is, it was being expected. Hence, professional skills or the formats or the writing skills as we may want to call it are going to be giving you 20 extra marks 
while you only write for 80 marks in the exam very important guys that we do not forget that we are writing for 80 but the way you are writing would give you 20 more marks so it is very important in the ASBEL exam that we should know how to write and that is the reason my friend we at Fentram we really spend good amount of time in terms of spending how to we really write in the exam by doing not only the the concept or the exam standard questions but we also do various past exam questions to tell you that this is what is expected from the examiner you know and you should certainly answer that in this way or in the way that examiner wants you to get the answer from what is really important over there is that you should have the right format you should have the right start you should have the right inclusion you should have the right exclusion you should know how to apply a professional skill you should know where to gather information from you should know the exhibits in terms of you know how one exhibit is related to the other and so on and so forth all of that is being done in the revision boot camp and i really want you my friend you know to really revise at least the past examination questions from the revision boot, boot camp to really go and oh, sorry to to revise it to before you really sit for exam very important and i you know i'm, I'm sure you know in the last session that we had and, and all the fan trammers would know that i've been categorically saying that having done your revision boot camp at least two times can really bring fortune to you because it not only helps you know how the examiner really throws a question at you but it also helps you to answer that in the way examiner really expects so doing question of you know doing that question revision boot, boot camp question by your own hand and of course seeing what i have done over there would give you the gap and you can club that gap you can really really close that gap and have the best of the marks available in the exam and that is how the practice would happen and that is what you should be doing come what may we have already done that sir we are proud friend trammer sir we are not forgetting on that i'm loving you my friend for that that is what i really need and that is what i really mean now coming on to the four major areas my friend that i really want you to concentrate on these are the four four major areas my friend i want everyone to concentrate in the coming three days these four areas can be a game changer my friend for all of you who are appearing for the exam because 90 percent if not more 90 percent of your total marks would be from these these three areas first three areas of course fourth is the pre seen material but first three areas would give you at least 90 percent of marks do not do not really forget on that very important my friend that we know all of these four areas in detail before we really set out for the exam leadership and the strategy related area is the first one my friend how can you be a strategic business leader of an organization without having the right leadership traits in yourself and of course without done or having done the entire strategy in terms of you know how one should be doing and of course delivering that in the context of an organization let's say you know and i've been part of various organizations what is the role that is being expected out of me as a leader of an organization one of the role that is being expected out of me as a leader of an organization is that I should be able to manage the business as is or as it is in terms of managing the status quo. Okay, good. Then my next role or my you know second set to my role is that I should be able to manage the growth of the business. Thinking about the growth, thinking about what should I be doing more, whether in country, outside country, with these products, more products and so on and so forth. What can I do more? While I think of that, one of the another important aspect is that sh what should I be doing with the risk that I'm getting exposed to? Fair enough. What should I be doing from the standpoint of having right internal controls in an organization? Very right. Very good. What should I be doing from the standpoint of technological changing or advancements or innovations that are happening? Very right, sir. Very important. Very imperative and so on and so forth. What should I be doing from the overall project standpoint in the organization? Yes, sir. What should I be doing from the change standpoint? Yes, sir. What should I be doing from the standpoint of disruptions that are happening? Yes, sir. Isn't that something very basic that you would get exposed to when you would hit any organization? Yes, sir. If this is those, those, uh, I would say, S sort of areas if these are like those sort of areas that you would get exposed to when you would get into an organization why would strategic business leader exam would not have it in the exam 
they would certainly have it my friend and they always have these kind of things in the exam they always throw you under the bus to really understand that do you know do you know in terms of you know how you should be handling how you should be doing or how you should be progressing how you should be really replying how you should be really addressing how you should be really answering in these kind of scenarios when you would get exposed to that in the real life scenario what kind of leadership skill you would demonstrate in a company which is getting exposed to so many other things what is the strategy that you would need to have if you have to acquire somebody if you are going to get into a particular geography if you are going to launch a particular product if you are really stopping or you know discontinuing any kind of company or product or services and what not what would you do from the organizational management standpoint as far as the overall management is concerned what would you do from the management of control standpoint what kind of controls you would have in different kind of industry whether it is airline whether it is you let's say com cloud computing whether it is um, uh, let's say a, a, a gymnasium whether it is the fmcg whether it is an it company and so on and so forth what would you do there in at that point in time a big question mark and if you know that then you have to really give the examiner not only the understanding of that concept but also how would that concept relates to the scenario that is given in the question so you would learn the theory and then you would learn in terms of how you would apply that theory to the practical exam and what you would do that is something examiner always looks upon and that is the reason my friend when you would now sit for your exam in the upcoming attempt what is really imperative for you or important gonna be important for you is that you are able to understand the requirement of the question you know the concept you understand the concept relate that concept to the question and then answer that you have to make your question make your answer very much relevant to that industry if you are handling the airline industry be the be the ceo cfo controller of the airline industry if you are handling the leather industry become a leather expert if you are handling the car manufacturing industry think as if you are manufacturing the car you have to step into the shoe my friend in order to get the right answer from yourself this is the mistake my friend many of the students do by just writing the theory writing the theory will not gonna be giving you marks in the strategic business leader exam you have to have to and have to correlate correlate to the requirement of the question and also in the context of the industry that has been given to you and then it would be in a classical answer and that is what you really need to do i keep highlighting that my friend as i've been doing that in the sessions what is really going to be key over here is that you're not doing these mistakes you're stepping on to the shoe of the ceo cfo board of director controller and what not of that particular company and then thinking about as to what can go wrong what is right for you what is not going to be the right fit for you what is going to be the right fit for you and so on and so forth and then taking decision for yourself is that clear yes sir now if you are really going to become a strategic business leader can you run away from the technology and the disruption that is happening the swiggies of the world the zomatos of the world the zooms of the world and so on so for the way they have been changing the economy the changing the maths the paytms of the world the way the you know the the industry is really changing or the transactions are really changing they really wanting strategic business leader to be able to understand these innovations understand these disruptions and seeing as to how would that impact the, re the recent exam you know the, the you know the question that that you would have seen and um, if you have given it but if you have not the question that came up was that you know they were implementing one of the you know one of the res recent technological development in their company or you know recent technological change in the company which really they, which, which was really warranted so if you are really thinking about that kind of a change you being the cfo ceo controller of an organization how should you be thinking about it is something that is going to be the game changer you should know that you know what are your plus and minuses and we'll talk on on that in a while when we'll touch upon the strategy but what is really important is one of course you should understand what does this technology mean for the organization on one side and two if we will implement that do i have a strength what and what kind of weaknesses i have would this be a right preposition would this work and so on so forth that you can only answer if you'll step into the shoe of that cfo of that ceo of that controller of that business analyst in that company
I always say, I'm sure you know many of the friend trammers would correlate that. I always say, step into the shoe of that particular person who is dealing that scenario in that context. I'll become a business analyst of an airline industry if it is a question of an airline industry. I'll become a CFO of a car manufacturing organization if a question is of car manufacturing organization. Because when you'll go over there, when you'll have that as a position, you'll start thinking of like that. Then you would not go bizarre. Uh, in general, you may think so many other things. But when you'll become a car manufacturing CFO, then your concentration would be more because now you know that I am, I am managing a car business which is a capital intensive business wherein I would have spent or I had good amount of investment in my assets, in my manufacturing unit, which would have highest or big depreciation, which would have huge labor cost and so on and so forth. So when you step into the shoe of a CFO or a CEO or a controller of a car manufacturing organization, your mind start thinking like that. When your mind start thinking like that, then your answer to the questions are also, also are going to be headed on the same lines. Very important guys, you know, do not take this lightly. I'm telling you with various, various discussions that I've had with students around the world who have been a very successful Fintrammers. They have been saying this, that this mantra has really helped them do well in the exam because they have really taken the seat at the table of becoming or wearing the ha by wearing the hat of that particular person and have answered in the context of that particular industry that particular company taking into consideration the concepts that they had at the back of their mind we have practiced that a lot my friend in the revision boot camp please go and see the past examination questions again that is gonna be giving you an edge do not forget on that i just wanted to repeat this like a broken record please do not forget that is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, coming on to the last, which is not the least, we will be covering pre scene material of the upcoming exam on the, on the last day. Do not forget that. We would be covering that together, my friend, in order to kill that in the best possible way. Do not, do not really miss on to that. All right. Now, coming on to the examples of the areas that we'll be covering. This is the expected list, my friend, that we have or I have for you that we'll be covering from the syllabus area standpoint. These are the areas which I said I've cherry picked for you that I really want to go through with you just to ensure that you have the, you know, have the holistic edge over all these areas. We will be covering the, the cultural web, which is very important from the leadership standpoint. And of course, you know how to change that culture. I would be giving you a you know, mnemonic over there also, of course, to help you in terms of, you know, having an edge and of course, having the, the holistic view in terms of, you know, what you should be doing when the question really comes your way. Do not forget, my friend, while we do that, we will also talk on various tips and tricks and of course, various ways the examiner has been asking that and what is the way to answer that. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Going on, going on, you know, we'll be covering from the governance standpoint, we'll be covering, you know, the Mendelos framework. We'll be also talking on the corporate governance principles, the integrated reporting. Again, very important thing, my friend, we'll be talking on that too. And of course, while we do that, we'll add on various other areas, my friend, that you have in your mind. So if you have anything that really comes your way or in your mind, do not forget writing a question on to ourselves. You know, do, you can also post your questions on, you know, just below this video or of course in the chat box, you know, so, you know, you, you should keep posting the questions so that towards the end, you know, if there is anything that I can pick up, I'll certainly pick up and I can really tell you that this is what you should be doing. The intention of this, this session is that I should be able to resolve a hell lot of doubts for yourself, what you really have in, my, in your mind as far as the exam is concerned. The upcoming exam is something that I'll be killing, sir. I would kill the SBL exam in the best possible way. I'm a proud Fintrammer, sir, and that is what I really want to carry from this room. You have to have to be a proud fin trammer and for that i really need you 100 percent with me promise me that i can promise you result is that clear yes sir from the strategy standpoint from the strategy standpoint we'll be covering pestil the portus diamond portus five forces and soft matrix bcg matrix is something that i picked up for us to be covering do not forget that my friend do not forget that that we have only taken up few of the pointers few of the topics over here there are many others that we have not picked up. That doesn't mean that those are not important. But there is a, you know, from the, limit, from the revision standpoint, I have picked up a few of the specific areas that I really want you to ensure that you're not missing on to it. Is that clear? Yes, sir. 
from the risk standpoint we'll be covering you know the tara strategy the coso framework very important we'll also be covering my friend the e businesses you know the disruptions the the cyber security again you know you know the kind of changes that are happening are very important the big data cloud computing and so on so forth we'll also be talking on the internal controls components and the internal audit again very important aspect we'll also be talking on the strategic change project management and the popit framework we are also going to be covering various technical articles my friend now this is something i really want you to carry along with you while we have inculcated and of course incorporated many of the contents of these technical articles into our sessions any which way and you have covered that i know i know that but what is going to be important over here is you know why my tone go up and go down because i want you to be awake my friend i do not want you to sleep i do not want you to sleep you have to be with me for the upcoming 2 3 hours i really want to give you 100% my friend and you should be really you know willing and looking forward for taking that from me what is really important is that when i fly to your country your state your city my coffee should be outstanding because after you clear your exam you have to certainly treat me with the cup of coffee and i guess i can tell you guys with a with a very much you know you know a proud feeling that i have my coffees outstanding around the world now and you are the only reason for it because you have lived me with me and you have you know you know sort sort of you have built me in these sessions to ensure that i am able to add value to yourself and i say it very proudly that i have coffee outstanding all throughout the world you can take the benefit of it and I, of course i can take my coffee once you have cleared it but what is really imperative is that for these three sessions for these these sessions of revisions and of course in the full course and the revision boot camp you should be with me 110% there is no compromise on that is that clear yes sir we will be covering various technical articles as i said and of course while we do that we will also talk on you know what is the best tips and techniques to really handle those technical articles and of course in the kind of questions that you may really see over there that is again something to look forward to and of course answer that over there all right the some of the other important areas that we'll be covering you know and you know we'll try to have the have the complete hang of it is to have the understanding of you know various professional skills we have five professional skills communication analysis evaluation skepticism and commercial acumen we'll be going through all of that and of course while we do that we'll also talk on kind of questions that you may really see in the exam and of course if you really see that how one should be answering that we'll also be talking on various you know exam techniques on um, whether it is reading skills writing skills time management and of course formats format is going to be the key over here we'll be talking on that and of course how should you be killing the exam is something from the format standpoint we will really get into and of course last but not the least towards the end we'll also be touching upon the q and a we'll be talking on various doubts and queries that you may have from the examination standpoint from your preparation standpoint and as i said if there is any key posting onto the chat keep posting posting on to the video to ensure that i am able to really tell you what exactly you should be doing from the examination standpoint is that clear yes sir i'm loving you my friend the kind of patience that you are showing to me i'm loving you that all right moving on to the four major areas to really concentrate in the exam i am starting off with the leadership and the strategy related area very important guys very important that we are not missing on to it leadership and strategy is one of the area that examiner always always have in the exam at and the weightage if, you, if i can really tell you the weightage of these these uh, two important things which is leadership and strategy can be approximately 40 to 50% at times in your exam sir 40 to 50% what are you saying yes my friend it at times goes up to 40 to 50% they really really test you very hard on this area and we would be spending good amount of time in terms of understanding all all of this that you really need to know just to make sure that you would not you're not missing you know missing it and doing the mistake the one thing that i have done over here my friend is what i've done is that i've tried uh compartmentalizing the kind of questions that you generally get in this area and i have tried giving you what you should be doing one of the important area or one of the important issue that i have seen in the strategic business leader exam is that many of the students say that sir we do not know which model to be applied where sir we understand model sir we understand theory we have understood completely understood no issue easy sir we have already done it sir sir we have done in bcom sir we have done in mba sir is it's an easy one sir i think it's a plain vanilla thing sir no problem sir but sir when it comes to question no when it comes to exhibit no so it is very confusing sir 
we do not know what to write sir we do not know how do we write sir we do not know you know which model to be applied where sir it is very confusing sir this is a very common statement my friend that you would hear from anyone and everyone who is appearing for the strategic business leader exam and guess i'm 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 just not joking for it when you will appear for yourself when you prepare yourself you would certainly get to know this kind of a scenario that this is a very unique problem or a very common problem uh, i not say unique a very common problem and you are not unique for it very common problem that student have that they do not know you know as to as to what they should be writing in that particular scenario that is where what i have done my friend from the leadership and strategy related area what i have done is i have tried compartmentalizing that into three important buckets and of course you know we'll we'll deep dive into some of the areas but this is something i really want you to at least start off with because if you have already prepared i'm assuming that many of you who are attending this session would have already prepared for you know for the exam and you already know i would say holistically uh, you know what the overall content is all about and you would have gone through the the models you have gone through this the syllabus areas the theories and so on and so forth you have already gone through that now you are attempting the questions you are trying to answer you are struggling at a bit you are doing the past exam questions and so on and so forth so you are really on the cusp of really doing things just before your exam now if that if this is something you know that really comes your way this would act as a sanjeevni booty this would really act as you know as in uh, to to an extent this would really be your raft to clear your strategic business leader exam if you are really you know if you can really do an you know an, an excellence on this now why do i say that there are generally three kind of questions that you would see in the exam and very common right and this is this actually relates to the to the thing that i really started off saying that you know what would you do in an organization so let's say if i am a cfo of bcg what would i do many of the times i have to keep assessing you know what all are my strength areas of my organization or what all are weaknesses of my organization where i need to work upon what all are the strength areas of my organization which i can really capitalize on and so on and so forth so if i really have to keep doing that what is the intent that i have i am assessing myself again and again again and again <coughs> to ensure that i am able to take the right decision at right point in time in a right way so what does that mean i am effectively assessing and doing the self introspection of myself to see that where do i have strength so that i can really do well on that front and where do i have weakness so that i can improve on it this is the first question or first area that examiner really test you on which is doing the strategic analysis or position analysis or the environmental analysis you would always and i i can tell you you know take down the past 10 years papers you would always see something on this coming up in the exam wherein he'll tell you that or he you know he can ask you in a different way and you know i've given some of the examples there can be many but all of some of these examples i've picked up from the past exams he might tell you analyze company strategic position or he might say analyze the environment and how does that impact he might say what are the key factors for you to be successful or what are the key factors for you to implement this or do you think that you should be able to manufacture this product considering where you are and so on and so forth so whatever he is asking over there he is basically asking you that do you know your strength do you know your weakness do you know your position have you done your position analysis have you done your strategic fitment have you done your environmental analysis have you done the strategic analysis of yourself effectively he is asking you to do the self introspection this is the first area which is very prominent in the exam my friend do not forget that i would be not surprised if you would get to see something like this in the exam surely you would have it one second you would also get to see an assessment no i am you know a cfo of black rock i know yaar i'm doing very good hunky dory everything is fine and then a proposal comes to me black rock is thinking about acquiring a company again i'm just making this out do not take names to be the names it's just an example black rock is thinking of acquiring a company now you have to think about that would that be good from the financial or non financial perspective for yourself or not is that a good decision 
or you are thinking about investing investing not only in the company but also into some of the proposal that has come your way be it a technology or be it a people you know people kind of investment also we make right all of those proposals all of those areas you keep getting my friend on day in and day out in the organization what would you do you would do cost benefit analysis very simple but from the strategic business leader standpoint you would not only look for finance you would go beyond finance and you would also look for the non financial aspect of it that is what the real real business guy would do he would analyze what the, what really goes on to the cost what really goes on to the revenue what is the cost benefit that i have and he will also say that okay this is the cost benefit and but this is the is the non financial area that i have to look forward to culture people fitment reputation risk non financial factors but very important i would be seeing on this most of the exam would have a question on this they'll give you the proposal they'll give you something to really talk on and do the financial and non financial analysis we by default my friend we are very good on financial analysis i can tell you most of us are good on financial analysis and bad quote and quote control be control you bad on the non financial analysis we have to balance this my friend we have to be equally good on both the aspect if you really have to do well in the exam you have to do a good financial analysis that this really makes sense and many of the times financial analysis is already given in the question you just have to validate that or put the pointers or take out the pointers from it but you also have to do the good non financial analysis very important got it sir this is the second area that we get an exam question sir got that third one very important i can tell you this with very much very much i would say seeing the precedence i'm very much confident that you know if you get something like question uh, like 3 point number 3 which is decision making if you get something that then that effectively means that approximately 40 to 45 marks are coming from leadership and strategy area because if you get a question on decision making then effectively he'll give you one thing you know which is like so generally question has two parts or three parts let's say you know you get a question on decision making the first part will be like of 20 24 marks 25 marks which will talk on you know evaluating any proposal let's say proposal to acquire or let's say you know to a proposal to close you know closure of the business and so on and so forth so on the one hand you'll be evaluating and on the other hand they may ask you question on let's say you know commenting on the internal environment or commenting on the overall non financial analysis financial analysis so effectively what they are really looking forward to is that they would holistically uh, split it up in a way that you know 24 marks or 10 15 marks here and there will make it like 40 35 36 40 marks kind of a question and all of that is something that you would be able to answer if you know the leadership and strategy well in the exam that is the important of strategy and leadership as an area that is what you really need to know from the examination standpoint if this area really comes up but sir this is not right sir really we are not happy sir why sir we are really not happy that you are telling us that you know these three areas are, are you know may come in the exam so this is okay no we somewhat we knew knew na that these three areas will come we somehow always uh, had the understanding that strategy is, is highly tested leadership is highly tested and we always know that you know positioning thing will come up or assessment will come up or decision making we somehow knew na sir but what we didn't know is how to answer this what is the right way of answering this sir that is where we needed your help sir what are we talking sir i'm loving you my friend for that i'm really loving you i really love you for this if, if you are because if you are asking me this then you are in the right direction of thinking about what's right next and that is what i've done my friend i am not only giving you that these are the areas that will be tested in the exam but i am also telling you now how you should be addressing this area and this slide says a lot my friend and i can tell you if you have done well on this slide if you have really done well on this slide then even lord krishna on this earth will not be able to stop you clearing this exam very important my friend that we do not miss on the slide very important that we do not miss on this discussion very 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 important that we are understanding this in entirety as to what you should be doing when a strategy question really comes up your way very important that you are not missing on to it so let's understand this 
if there is a question my friend in the exam that really tells you you know understand analyze companies environment external environment strategic positioning uh, internal factors and so on and so forth what you should be doing over there is something that is written in yellow what it says is that you should be doing or applying pastel over there if it is an external environment that you are being asked in the exam you have to apply pastel the political the economic the social the technological and so on and so forth you have to see through all of these factors to ensure that you are understanding the environment of an organization from the external standpoint if that is the need very important that we are not missing on to that we will always analyze internal as well as external factors always do that but from the external standpoint we follow pestel of course if it is for the organization but when it comes to you know having a analysis done from the industry standpoint let's say i am going to be doing an analysis as to how i have strength and weaknesses let's say i am in you know i'm i'll take the same example that i am into car manufacturing and i'm thinking about having the 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 edge or having the pluses and minuses from the standpoint of car manufacturing organizations or car industry then effectively what i really need to do over there is i have to follow the porter's diamond 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 sir why are you repeating sir i am repeating that my friend so that you do not miss on that when never when never we are thinking about industry level industry level analysis you have to follow the porter's porter's diamond do not oh, oh i'm so sorry i missed on that it is port of five forces i'm i'm my my bad extremely sorry for that whenever you are doing an industry industry level comparison or industry level analysis you have to follow port of five forces i'm extremely sorry for that you know it, it, you know i just went by you know in terms of what is being written over here you have to follow the port of five forces when it comes to the when it comes to the industry level comparison i'll start from the scratch i think that is important when you are analyzing the external environment my friend you have to follow the you know you have to follow the pestle that gives you how you are doing from the external environment standpoint whether it is political whether it is you know uh, whether it is economical whether it is um, social whether it is technological and so on and so forth so effectively your environmental analysis is being done by the pestle when it comes to the industry level analysis as to what kind of pluses and minuses you have from the industry you do porter's five forces you understand five forces in terms of you know what ever they are you understand that and then you take a decision we'll talk on port of five forces in a while i do have a separate slide for it just to give you an insight when it comes to the geography thinking about you launching a product in particular country thinking about you getting into a particular country or getting out of a particular country what you do is you follow a porter's diamond there you follow a porter's diamond there you follow a porter's diamond there sir why are you repeating sir i'm repeating this my friend like a broken record we do not do not really miss on to that you have to analyze the external environment by the pestle got it sir you have to do the industry level understanding or get the industry level understanding from the porter's five forces i get that sir you have to do a sorry you have to do a porter's diamond from the standpoint of getting an understanding about the geography so if there is a geography level analysis that you really need to do the have to you have to follow the porter's diamond porter's diamond porter's five forces pestle is a common thing that you do from the positioning analysis but you only have to see what positioning you are doing in that context if you are only thinking about you know where you are right now you would be doing pestle if you are thinking about that from the industry parlance because the question would say that in terms of the edge that you have in the industry you would be doing porter's five forces if you are thinking about particular geography whether you going to be getting into company country or getting out of the country you would be doing porter's diamond over there get that sir get that very clear my friend that is what you would be doing from the strategic analysis standpoint now all of this is external analysis but you also have to see in terms of you know what all are the internal factors that are positive for you do i have a right right head count do i have right uh, people do i have right technology do i have right funds and so on and so forth all those internal factors are also taken into consideration for the purpose of doing your strategic or positioning analysis is that clear yes sir when never the question on on strategic analysis gets in you know we do have one uh, you know uh, 
uh, technical article today that we'll be covering in a while which talks on the strategic analysis but whenever whenever you get to see something on the strategic analysis think about pistol think about about porter five forces think about porter's diamond and think about internal factors very important guys that we're not missing on to this we should know which model to be applied where now we know sir the normal normal external environment analysis we have to follow pistol the 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 analysis from the industry level standpoint we will be following the porter's five forces when it comes to different geography sir will be following porter's diamond and internal factors we any which ways have to consider in whatsoever case possible we are loving you sir i am also loving you my friend that is what you should be following that is the right approach and that is the mantra i want you to live with is that clear yes sir now comes the assessment my friend when you are being supposed to do an assessment as i said you have to do the cost benefit analysis now you may have to compute the net present value over there irr over there you know if the discounting factor is not available then the profits over there and so on and so forth so on one side you will be doing the cost benefit analysis and on the other side you should be doing the not uh, i would say the non financial analysis too which is more to, to do with that you know if i really get into it you know what would be the impact on my people is that really aligned culturally to me you know what kind of things that may go bad may go right more from the non financial factor standpoint whether it is attrition whether it is having more people in the, or right people whether it is cultural alignment cultural alignment whether it is you know uh, we having you know legal issues we having you know complex uh, people issues and so on so forth so depending upon all of those uh, non financial factors we finally decide that yes should we be going should we should do not be not be going and so on and so forth so forth what is really important over here is that we are doing financial as well as non financial factors consideration taken into consideration and then deciding the right course of action for yourself is that clear yes sir now coming on to decision making my friend now decision making effectively tells you now this is a proposal should i be going forward for you know to that or not should i be really you know uh, living by that or not is something that is very common and very pertinent in the exam and if that really comes your way what you should be doing is that you should be doing all that that is being mentioned in yellow over here what it really says is that you have to do strategic fitment which is nothing but you know what you're seen about which is the strategic positioning match and the financial and non financial consideration what you really add on to this fitment piece is that you also do cultural match you know whether the cultural match is there whether what you are really deciding of is good from the future orientation standpoint will it work for you in the future and so on and so forth so effectively what when you have done the financial and non financial evaluation when you have done the future orientation when you have done the cultural match when you have done this you know the overall strategic positioning which is pestel porter five forces porter's diamond or you know as the case may be internal analysis then comes the feasibility and acceptability so when i say acceptability is that you know whatever decision that you are taking considering all that what you, what we just spoke should you be going considering that you know your management would be in agreement or not so effectively the acceptability is that your management would agree to that or not do you know that if they agree then of course it is a go ahead if they do not agree then of course you know you have to highlight that that you know management is a concern over there so from the from the feasibility standpoint it is a concern and you know from the acceptability standpoint it is a concern and then comes the feasibility which is that do you have funds or not in terms of doing what is being supposed to be done in the question and if you have tick in the box like from acceptability to feasibility and you know from the you know let's say positioning perspective from the cultural perspective from the future orientation standpoint or from the non financial financial consideration standpoint if you have tick from all go for it there is absolutely no issue with it this is what you should be doing and this is what you know anybody would do in that kind of a scenario is that clear yes sir this slide really tells you my friend in terms of approach that you should be following when it comes to strategic analysis what is that that you should be doing when it comes to assessment what is that that you should be doing when it comes to decision making what is that that you should be doing you should really know it and i'm telling you if there is a question or decision making that really comes your way it is going to be giving you at least 40 to 45 marks or 50 at times it really depends on you know what kind of question really throws at you but if that really comes your way you should know that you know you have to do the strategic positioning you have to do the 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 overall uh, cultural mismatch or you know cultural match kind of a thing or 
future orientation kind of a thing and of course financial and non financial consideration this effectively gives you the the strategic fitment and then you have the acceptability and feasibility being added on to it they call it you know sfa analysis or saf analysis as the case may be but we'll not go that you know in terms of you know just memorizing that we'll go to the logic go to the basics in terms of you know why it is the way it is and you know we can completely understand that you know for the purpose of making the decision these factors are very important the cultural match is very important the future orientation of our decision is very important the strategic positioning and of course you know having having the right positioning done basis you know the various models is going to be very important the financial and non financial consideration is going to be very important and then acceptability by management is going to be the game changer and then comes the feasibility which is having funds for it if we have the tick in the box then you know let's go forward with it if we do not then you know we have to mention that accordingly is that clear yes so very important guys that we do not miss on that this slide is going to be the game changer if you really implement that and i'm telling you with you know with detailed discussions that i've had with various kids and you know the past exams all of the questions that you would see in the exam would be either lying in one of the buckets and you have to answer that considering this if you are able to answer that you are fulfilling the need of the examiner you know, and that is what he really needs is that clear yes sir should we go forward yes sir all right moving on to strategic position analysis i think i have covered that you know if you are doing the macro environmental analysis which is external analysis you have to follow the pistol industry specific areas if you really have to refer you have to do the port of five forces and then from the geography specific areas you know you would need to the port, do the port of diamond you also would do the the internal factors my friend and you know what makes you different is going to be something that you should be knowing you know you should know your you know your organization pluses and minuses you know we call it to be threshold and the strategic capabilities in terms of you know what do you have at the best in yourself is something that you should be considering from the strategic positioning standpoint then comes the assessment my friend and again these are some of the tips that i really have for you that you know when you're doing the assessment what you should be doing the cost benefit implication is something that you know you should always do in terms of you know what that is and if there is anything that is given in the question wherein you know and this is more to do with the fact that many of the times appraisal is already being given to you analysis is already being given to you if that is the case you know always see for any kind of issues that you may have in the exam uh, let's say you know npv uh, rate that is being used is right or wrong sales or cost they are increasing or decreasing in a different way or in a same way we should think about it you should also talk on taxes you know if they have not considered taxes you should also talk on you know payback period sensitivity analysis those are the things you know my friend you would many of the times you would see in the exam from the uh, from the context uh, of the fact that they have already given you a working in the exam so when you are seeing that working you know and some of the areas that are not clear to you it is always good to mention that to the examiner that you know these are the areas because that would also showcase the examiner that you know so much you are a really proud fin trammer and you really know so much about the case so much about the context that you are able to answer that and add value to the examiner and he would also understand that you know yes he is the guy who understand has more holistic view more broader view and you know he is the guy to be the strategic business leader of an organization that is the feel that you really want him to live with and that is what you should be following when you are thinking about you know working that has been given to you many of the times you would see some gaps over there highlighting those gaps or even saying that you know uh, the rate that is being you know uh, followed or or being used you know is is may need to go you know in, into further consideration considering xyz so effectively you are raising the doubt and of course sharing the examiner that you are understanding that and politely challenging that to in a way that is needed you should also talk on you know the financial implication any kind of funding issues that you may have when when you do the financial evaluation any kind of you know penalties probable losses that you may have again you know this part this, this form part of your financial analysis because when you're doing the financial analysis you're not only thinking it from the revenue standpoint you're also thinking from the cost standpoint and any kind of cost that you may see coming your way you should be thinking about that and of course having that and you should also think about you know any kind of future impact or dilution again the recent question that we saw in the exam was wherein we were thinking of you know uh, let's say uh, having a company and and purchasing that company by by the issue of shares now one of the aspect that that may come your way is that when you are purchasing you know a company through the shares the existing shareholders would have a dilution because you are you are issuing more shares so they would have a dilution in terms of you know the percentage share that they had on the they have on the company so that is again something if you really see you know while you are doing the financial analysis all of those pointers that you know if they really come on to your mind you should be mentioning that because the examiner really loves it he really wants you to think that way and should be able to point out these important pointers to the examiner 
in the best possible way because that is the the industry that's how industry really works that's how you should be doing and that's what you would be doing when you would step into an industry is that clear yes sir now when it comes to the you know non financial parameters you know or non financial areas you know you should think about various things as we just spoke we should think about the people the resource availability not available and so on and so forth kind of monitoring issues that you may have you know you may also th- see the pestle you know porter five forces or porter's diamond you know from the non financial factor standpoint because many of these factors can be can be non financial you know it's like having having high attrition having high uh taxes having high uh, economic issues or inflation you know all of those are non financial factors to an extent which may not be impacting your pnl right now but may would impact it over a period of time so all of those areas to be uh, are to be considered from the assessment standpoint when you are thinking about giving a holistic answer of having the cost benefit done and also the non financial factors done is that clear yes sir coming on to the SAF analysis or SF analysis, as you may want to call it, you know what happens over there is that you, know, if it is a decision-making question, sir, it it can go like 40 marks, sir. We can we can really know 40, 45 marks. Who knows that? You have to do the strategic fitment, sir. So we already done that, sir. From the strategic fitment standpoint, we do the strategic positioning. We know, sir, pistol. We know port of five forces. We know port of diamond. We know all of that, sir. We do cultural fitment. We know that, sir. We do future orientation. We understand that, sir. We do the positive assessment. That is the return, the financial versus non-financial factoring. We've done that, sir. We understand that. And then comes the acceptability, sir. We have to see that, you know, will our leadership will accept it? If I'm listed company, then I have to see, you know, my board, CEO. they would they accept it if i'm not a listed company i have see you know my my owners or my leaders they would accept it or not if you know from the feasibility standpoint i have to see that you know would do i have funds do i have resources available is there any legal complication being available and so on so forth if you can capture these three four slides my friend if you can capture these four slides you're there you're there from the examination standpoint none of the question in the exam can be get, you know can be out i would say or will be outside the scope of what we have discussed in these three four slides most of the question that really comes in the exam from the leadership and strategy standpoint are being covered by these three four slides this these can be game changer for you my friend do not undermine the importance of it i'm telling you this can really be a game changer for yourself all that you really need to do is all that you really need to do is that follow this to the entirety practice few questions on it and to the fintramers i can tell you just go back go back and practice the revision boot camp that is going to be the game changer for you my friend it's going to be the raft raft p that would take you from the c of spl is that clear yes sir now that really brings me to a place where now we are starting on some of the important topics that we will be considering from the examination standpoint if we have to start off with the first one we have cultural web here now if you really have to assess assess what assess the organization from the cultural standpoint i have a mnemonic for you mnemonic that can really help you know as to what you should be doing in the assessment of a cultural web when you are assessing the cultural web you have to do crops you have to see crops now what does this crops really means c stands for the control systems we have to think about that you know organization has what kind of control system whether it is a centralized system decentralized system whether it is a loose ended closely knitted and so on and so forth we have to see kind of control system an organization really have all right then comes the r r is nothing but rituals and the routine we have to see the core belief that are there in the organization what kind of routine an organization really follows what is very common in that organization what is not that common in the organization very important for us to get the perspective as to what this organization is all about then comes the organizational structure that is o of crops so c done r done o of crops means organizational structure that will tell us that is my organization tall narrow wide flat depending upon you know what kind of organizational structure i am really looking up to or really living with i have to understand that you know what kind of organization this is all right sir that would give me a perspective that you know what is really happening in my organization basis what the way we are being structured all right sir that is c 
R O dancer then comes the P P is the power structure now who are the leader of the of our organization what is the way they are managing a way of their management how are they managing it is something that I really have to look forward to whether it is an autocratic leadership style or a participative leadership style I really have to know that sir I really have to understand to ensure that I am able to put a pulse on or get a pulse on in terms of you know what that is that is nothing but the P of crops then comes the S S stands for symbols now what kind of jargons acronyms you know abbreviations language is that is being used in my organization I can tell you you know in, in, in BCG we used to have various acronyms you know so once you'll understand that once you are used to that you're able to understand that you know what this these this organization uh, you know is, is being using what kind of jargons these, these these guys these guys really follow and so on and so forth so if you really want to do well in that organization you have to understand those jargons understand those areas just to ensure that you're not missing on various important points then comes these stories what are what has been the history what has been the past what has happened in the in the in the you know company at large what has been the belief what has been the successes what has been the failures and so on and so forth so i would really be able to tell me that you know what really works well in the organization so if really if you as an you know organization leader if you being the leader of an organization if you really have to understand that you know what can go wrong or you know what is the organization all about i have to see the crops to really understand that you know yes this is what the organization is and this is what is all about so for assessing the culture of an organization crops is gonna be the key you have to see if in case there is something that really comes your way from the strategic fitment standpoint you know that you have to do the cultural fitment there from the strategic fitment standpoint you have to see through that you know how the culture is really aligned if that is the case you should know you should know that you have to do the crops you should know that you know which element you know, talks on what once you know it know it becomes a lot easier for you to really find out the information and that is where you know the key is or that is where you know the you really have to do well um, that you know at least once you know it your mind will start working in that direction so it is very important that we are not missing on the crops per se when it comes to the the cultural thing all right now sir i i know now that you know what is to be looked from the from the culture standpoint now many of the times you are you're, you're being exposed to a question wherein you have to change the culture of an organization if you have to change the culture of an organization all that you really need to do is you have to understand you miss you miss is the mnemonic that is being given my friend to ensure that you are not missing out getting the marks from the cultural question what you really need to do on the you miss side is you stands for understanding the culture which is nothing but understanding the core crops then mapping the organizational culture you know map out as to you know what exactly it is and then i stands for identify the changes you know considering this the organization really is this is the culture of an organization is not anything and everything needs to be changed you should know that you know these are the elements that are needing a change these are the element that i might need to think through in terms of changing them or suggesting a change on only look forward for those areas then strategize to get those changes done when now when you really have to think about strategizing the culture strategizing a change you have to you know of course implement you know maybe a puppet or maybe another model so we'll talk on that also in a while in terms of you know what that model is but what is really important is that you should be able to strategize what is to be changed and then comes the starting the implementation you miss the crops you miss the marks do not forget that crops is something that is needed to understand the culture of an organization and you misses the mantra to really follow in terms of understanding the culture and changing them very important my friend i have given you this mnemonic particularly keeping things in mind that you know examiner many of the times ask the questions if you really ask question on this ground you should know you miss the crops you lose marks you miss the crops you lose marks we are fintrammer sir we are not going to be doing that when it comes to culture you should have things in your mind that you have to assess it on the c on the r on the o on the p on the s and s you have to have to know crops and then when you do that you know that to that you have to apply the you miss over there you have to understand you have to map you have to identify you have to strategize and you have to start implementation you should have that in your blood in yourself to make sure that you're not missing on to it I, I can tell you my friend very confidently i've seen that in past with all my experiences that if you have these things on running on in your mind and you have a question on the culture it becomes a lot easier for you to find out what is really needed in c in r in o in p in s and in s you know the crops and then comes the only and only you miss over there wherein you will understand identify map uh, strategize and start the implementation of change if you do that you would get the marks out of it 
Is that clear? Yes, sir. All right. Moving on to pistol, my friend. There's some of the impo very important pointers that we have picked up just to make sure that we are not missing on it. I'm sure, my friend, you know this. I'm sure you have seen this. I'm just trying to highlight a few of the very important areas that you need to see in the exam just to make sure that you're not missing on to it. All right. From the environmental analysis standpoint, we do pistol. We know, sir, political, economic, social, technological, environmental, and legal, sir. We understand that, sir. Let me give you one more slide that would really help you in terms of what you should be doing, what you should be doing in all of these areas and what you should be thinking through if this area really comes up in the exam. Let's say you get a question on the pestle analysis that really talks on that you have to do an analysis, whether it is internal, external or whatever, you know, you, you know that, you know, ultimately you are ending up doing a pestle there. Got it, sir. Then you should be thinking about P-E-S-T-E-L. Got it, sir. Then you should be thinking about from the political standpoint, do you have government policy or stability there? Do you have government approval licensing requirement there? Do you have taxes or subsidy there? Do you have government intervention there? Do you have too much of a government change over there? Or stability is a big time issue over there? All of these factors are to be considered from the political standpoint to really take the right decision for yourself. Got it, sir. From the economic standpoint, think about inflation, interest rates, recession, unemployment, and so on and so forth. Think on those areas. When it comes to economic thing, think on those areas to make sure that you know you're really pointing on these areas. The growth, you know, what kind of you know, do we have an upturn in the economy, downturn in the economy? Think about that when you're thinking about the economic economic factors. All right, thinking about social, thinking about population, thinking about income distribution, thinking about you know lifestyle, thinking about the age, you know, the, the kind of age that you know the 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 country has. Thinking about attitude of working, you know, thinking about your level of education. You know, that would really help you in terms of deciding the right things and so on and so forth. Social factors. Think out. And I'm just giving a few examples, my friend. There can be many more. I'm just trying to be illustrative over here to tell you that these are things that you should be thinking about when it comes to the pestle. Got it, sir? T, technological. Think about government spending on research. Think about, you know, the new discoveries, developments, industry focus on the technological effort. Think about the speed of technological transfer. Think about do you have resources also or not? Think about, you know, internet, online, how much of that is being penetrated? Are you in an area where technology is not there, internet is not there, then technological advancement itself will go for a toss and so on and so forth. Think on that. Then comes the, you know, ecological or environmental, whatever you may call it. Think about environment, think about, you know, pollution, think about the waste emission you know there is a there's a new technical article that you know also has you know that, that has come up that really talks on these kind of factors and we'll cover that you know i'm i'm, I'm you know very soon on that we'll co we'll cover that in detail to ensure that we're not missing on to that but when it comes to ecological or environmental thing you should really know that you know how would that impact because this would really be impacting your holistic decision got it sir then comes the legal you think about taxation think about you know kind of laws that are there in that country or in that company or in that you know region think about legislation that are really impacting you to work think about environmental protection laws if you have any think about you know patent copyright trademark all of those things really impact my friend for you to take or or work in that particular geography in that particular domain and so on and so forth always think about pastel on these lines these are really good examples my friend what you really find in the exams do not, do not forget that. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Again, as I said, this list is an illustrative list. You know, you can get more things, you can get less, but what is really important is that you're not missing out on these areas. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Moving on to port of five forces, competitive forces. Do not forget, my friend, where do you use port of five forces? Sir, when it comes to the industry-wide things, industry-wide analysis, we use port of five forces to ensure or to understand where we are from the industry standpoint. There can be, there can be five factors to be considered. Number one, threat to entry. Do I really need to, you know, for example, car manufacturing? Can anybody enter into car manufacturing industry? No, huge capex needed. Airline industry, huge capex needed. You know, a small, you know, mom and pop shop, anybody can open. So, you know, threat to entry can be a big factor that you need to consider in, in terms of making any decision. Supplier part, do you have a dependency on one supplier? Hindustan Petroleum, British Petroleum, one or two suppliers, do you have that dependency? All your suppliers are many. Depending upon that, you have to take the right decision. Threat to substitutes, you know, what you're really into. Do you have many substitutes available, many competitors available? That would really define what kind of your strategy you should be, you know, working for. What kind of stride strategy would be in that kind of a scenario? Do you have a buyer power? You know, the entire thing that I really make is being consumed by only one, one buyer, which is the government. So I have a huge dependency on government. What kind of decision making that would have in that kind of a scenario? Do I have a bargaining power or not? And so on and so forth. 
competition and rivalry you know sort of you know having more substitute so do you have a lot of competition in the market depending on you know what kind of competition that you would have in the market you have to decide in terms of you know what should be the right course of action and so on so forth Four to five forces. Thinking about from the industry standpoint, industry standpoint, you have to think about that. You know what is the right course of action for yourself. Considering these five factors, what are you doing? Where are you? And what you should be doing from the futuristic standpoint is something that you really need to know. Really need to learn. Very important, my friend, that we know. We should know that four to five forces are used. Is used. is used sorry porter five forces is used in this scenario wherein we are doing the industry wide comparison or industry wide analysis very important that we are not missing on to that coming on to the porter's diamond we know sir where we use porter diamond sir i am really wanting you to tell me where would you use porter diamond sir we use porter diamond in the scenario wherein in the scenario wherein we are doing a geographical decision sir if you are getting into a country or getting out of a country launching a product in a different country and so on and so forth we would be doing the porter's diamond i'm loving you my friend for that that is the what you really need to do you have to do the porter's diamond over there wherein we have the factor condition what kind of factor conditions are available in that country raw material labor what kind of things are being available good very good if they are not good we have to take that decision all right related and supporting industry being available very important my friend where ever i'm going i'm going to taiwan for manufacturing leather product do i have a related and product you know related and supported industry being available not like italy right leather products are very much famous in italy they have a very good leather product because they have a huge you know related and supporting you know industry sector being available taiwan may not have it i should not go there all right firm strategy structure and rivalry what kind of you know rivalry i have what kind of competition i have what kind of It, you know um, substitutes i'm getting exposed to it really you know would help me take the right decision for yourself and what kind of demand conditions are there you know do you have a local demand or not if i do not have a local demand it's a big concern for me you know to go and manufacture over there because then i'm totally dependent on the exports and so on and so forth these factors are considered from the porter's diamond standpoint when you're taking a decision to get into or get out of a particular geography my friend you have to consider this you may not name it and again you know not to say this again and again you are going to implement a model in the exam without naming a model and i keep i keep saying that like a broken record in my class please do not mention a model in the exam it is not warranted what is really warranted is that you are really answering answering the question without naming a model but going by the model so you'll go you know by factor conditions demand conditions related you know related and supporting industries or you know you know having the firm rivalry and so on so forth from strategy and so and so on so forth you'll be going by this without really saying that you're implementing a porter's diamond you know if you're really be able to you know conceptualize and get all the pointers done in the format that is needed you are there you don't have to mention a model but applying right model to the right question in a right way is going to be the game changer do not do not do not forget that is that clear yes sir moving on my friend we have the ants of matrix that is nothing but the product industry market kind of a choice that you really need to make when you are really switching on and launching a product you know in in any country in any geography and so on and so forth you have four um, areas being given by the by, by the ants of on one axis we have the market now that can be new market or existing market and the other axis we have the product or services so what they really say is that if you are thinking about entering into you know your your own existing market and doing your own existing services you are no doing nothing but you know you are effectively doing the market penetration so having same or existing market with the existing product is nothing but the market penetration strategy which can only happen if you are able to demonstrate good amount of cost efficiency so if i am into uh, into a situation wherein uh, you know i am you know only staying in my existing uh, 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 business or in existing market and only doing and uh, living with my in by my existing services one thing that can only and only make me survive is that i am able to differentiate my services or i am able to make it as cost efficient as possible that is the only way to live and only way to survive all right now if it is an existing market and i am uh, i'm 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 launching an existing Uh, i'm launching i'm launching a new product or a new service then effectively it is more like expanding so you are expanding yourself into new product and services while you do that you have to you know really take into consideration the kind of demand that you would have 
and you should be able to fill in that you should be able to get that at the right price point and so on and so forth when it comes to the new market and you're launching an existing product it is more like you know you're developing your market so it is more like market development because you're going beyond your market and developing yourself into a different region into a different country but when you do that do not forget that you know since you're going out of your market and if it is out of you know out of your region the geography really changes so porter's diamond really gets into the play all right then if you it are getting into a new geography and a new product that is where the biggest challenge is and that is what they call to be you know conglomerate diversification wherein effectively what you're doing is that you're getting into a new area with a new product it is very risky you should be 110 percent sure in terms of what you're doing and why you're doing that there has to be a right strategy for it because there's a huge risk involved and that risk has to be calculative enough so you have to make sure that you know when you're writing an answer in relation to this that answer really really mention that you know you're really exposing yourself to various risks and really exposing yourself to various issues that you may get along your way so that exam really understand that you're really having ends of matrix onto your mind and this is what conglomerate diversification is all about is that clear yes sir now coming on to the bc bcg matrix again an excellent matrix my friend most of the companies i can tell you most is the wrong word all of the companies in the world can be put it across onto this matrix because you know this this matrix really takes care of you know all of all of the you know companies you know and they can be at a different stage in their life but you know this matrix really helps and coming from bcg i can tell you you know we take pride in saying that that this that you know uh, we come from a company wherein you know our matrix is being used by anyone and everyone in terms of assessing themselves as to where they are and this is what this matrix really says on one axis we have the relative market share and the other axis we have the market growth you know what it really says is that anybody and everybody who starts a business you know would certainly start you know from question marks as in you know they, their own relative share is low uh, wherein market growth can be high or low so if it if the market growth is high and i am low i am a question mark because you know, i don't know you know what is happening to me why am I, why my share is not high but if you know on the on the other hand you know uh, if i am if i am a question mark i would always intend to become a star or a cash cow if the market growth is very high and you know my growth is also very high i am also doing very high you know high in terms of my market share then i'm i'm effectively a star so high market growth in market and i have a high market share so i'm 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 a super super good uh, person over there or a company over there which ideally everybody would want to you know be but most of the time you are not star you become a cow because you know you would certainly see market growth taking a dip while you may maintain it you maintain your share so everybody would either want to be a star or a cow star is the case where market growth is very high and i am able to get the highest market share out of it cow is a stage or cash cow is a stage wherein market is is you know while it is getting dipped still i maintain a very high share you know so i am a cash cow there because even in the falling market i am able to maintain my share that can only happen <coughs> if you have an exceptional service exceptional brand uh, exceptional differentiation good price point and so on and so forth but if market is low and my share is even low then i am effectively a dog there and that is what i would always do not want to be get into that is a place any company and every company would always avoid the reason why bcg has come up you know with this matrices is that they effectively tell you that you know uh, you should be investing more and more money onto your cash cows and stars just to maintain the share and you should be spending as less as possible on to the dogs to make sure that you know you do not get into that that domain all the question marks should be di- you know should be diverging towards either to become a cash cow or the stars and the investment in the companies should be made considering that into mind if you get a question on this you are you all you know have a better you know bcg matrix on to your back of the mind and think about you know where you should be investing your money think about you know you becoming a cash cow you becoming a you know star think on those lines do not try to get into the you know domain of dogs you know that's that's not where you would want to be is that clear yes sir moving on to my friend few of the technical articles that i really want you to get a ref, you know refresher on you know these technical articles are the ones you know which specifically talks on you know on the areas of strategy and leadership i really want to you know scan you know scan through these technical articles for yourself and again to tell you in terms of you know what you should be doing when you get a question on these technical articles i'll quickly move on to you know why this you know uh, this is to help the student my friend and this is something i have picked up from the from the technical article itself that 
uh, strategic analysis question generally have a problem because you have to analyze as to you know what you should be doing in that kind of a scenario so this is to help the student how to read the strategic analysis question and of course frame a comprehensive view of strategic analysis and finally come on coming on to the conclusion candidates must ensure and this is what you know technical article really says specifically that candidates must ensure that they understand the detailed process of strategic analysis and for that what do they really need to do is they need to understand as to they should know as to where do they really want to go what all are the constraints that are there and if they know the constraints and what are the key threats from the external environments that they have and that is nothing but the port of five force or pistol we know that sir but what is really important is that when you're doing the strategic analysis any analysis and every analysis would want you would want you to know that where do you want to go and what all are the constraints that you have and how is external environment either helpful or not so helpful to you that is what you should be knowing and that is what you should be addressing when it comes to the strategic analysis question i think what we just started off with now when we said that you know these kind of strategic question will come up strategic analysis really circle that off because it really helps you in terms of thinking as to what you should be doing in that kind of a scenario now where do you want to go who are the key influencer you know in in your organization you should be knowing what kind of other stakeholders that you have you should be knowing you know in terms of you know uh, not the direct one but the indirect one mainly the government the employees and so on and so forth your suppliers and of course you know think about this from the from the corporate vision standpoint and again you know you must have seen my friend when we have practiced a question in the class and of course in the revision boot camp we have really circled down you know uh, the the organization's mission statement a lot because ultimately your strategy should be somewhat dependent on you know what your organization is really wanting or thinking through and your strategy should be somewhere circling off that you know this is what the overall goal of an organization is and this is what we should be doing in this kind of a scenario now i just wanted to give you examples of the constraints that you may get to see in the exam when you're doing your analysis you know in terms of that should you be going for a particular thing or not you should also be thinking about the six ms whether you have money or not whether you have machinery or not whether you have manpower or not whether you have active market or not whether you have material or not or whether you can have a makeup or not which is like do you have any limiting factor does your you know culture supports this or not so always have these constraints into your mind whenever you are taking any kind of strategic decisions these can be food of thought food for thought my friend when you are thinking about you know whether it is a question on the external environment whether it is a question on you know the the financial and non financial consideration or whether it is a question on having an ultimate choice of decision making done all of these factors you know would help you making that strategic decision that you know do i have should i know uh, you know where do do i know where you want to go which is more like what is the mission statement of an organization do i know kind of constraints that i have which is like you know 6 ms do i know you know the threats from the external environment which we have already done which is like port of five forces we have already done pestle we have already done some of the tips that you may i, I may have to give you there is which is something that we have already spoken read the question requirement first which is very important spend time in terms of analyzing the situation keep highlighting the situation in the strategic analysis you would like to mention structure it and think of conclusion as to what the conclusion would be you know which is like more like decision making write the problem issues observed with corresponding suggestions always and be very very professional examiner really likes it what i'm really trying to highlight over here is that strategic analysis is something that you would anyway have to do in the exam in in some shape or the other but while you do that always ensure that you are able to understand the the constraint factors that are there from the organization standpoint and of course what all are the external issues you are anyway covered in the pestel or port of five forces or port of diamond as the case may be but having a understanding about the mission statement and understanding about your internal constraints can be very helpful in terms of deciding the right course of action is that clear yes sir now there is another you know technical article i really want to revise today my friend for you just to make sure that you're not missing on that because you know this is a very recent technical article which you know which has come up and i really want you to be having a complete hang of it because even in the last exam you know that just came in you know we had a question on responsible leadership you know in terms of you know what you should be doing in this scenario you are getting exposed to now what does this mean you know this this uh, a technical article is more to help the student to understand that you know there are many stakeholders for an organization and you should know even in your question that you would get in the exam that there would be many stakeholders 
this would help you to have a you know have a view on how you, what you will be deciding or what is being discussed in an organization is going to impact impact the stakeholders this would also help my friend in terms of how you demonstrate that you are responsible enough that you are taking the decisions which are not only helping the organization to do what they are doing but also helping to have a sustainable and long term success because you are not uh, you are not taking something irresponsibly you are being very responsible as far as a leader is concerned or as far as a, a, a uh, human being is concerned so you are very responsible in terms of thinking not only about organization but also about environment and that is going to be the key because you would certainly see and again i'm i'm telling you with whatever i've seen you would now certainly see some questions coming from responsible leadership in every exam in some way or the other he would be asking that so be very important you know be very clear on this that this technical article can be can be very important from the examination standpoint now what should candidate do candidate must ensure that they understand the direct and the indirect stakeholders now this is the tip that i would have and again i've picked this up from the technical article you just have to take it you know and and ensure that you have this always understand that you know you have known what who all can be your direct and indirect stakeholders you should focus on the uh, broader needs of others rather than the personal interests so more like you know if you are let's say implementing uh, a situation wherein you are uh, impl- deploying a technology uh, into a company or a new technology into a company think about you know kind of attrition that that it would lead to or think about a situation that how many guys would get redundant if these guys would get redundant then what would be the impact if they will be out of the job and so on and so forth so you're thinking about you know not only yourself but you know for the people at large or if you're you know deploying this this technology would that have an impact on the environment as such in terms of you know things not working well for the environment or there is a uh, negative impact on 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 uh, the health of the people health of the employees and so on and so forth so you are taking into consideration the responsible decision making before really getting on to you know a conclusion consider societal and moral implication as i said you know ensure decision making is based on long term rather than you know satisfying the immediate priorities which is the profit so you have to make a decision which is like more having a you know a a right impact for the people in a right way I, and i do want to give you an example over here it is it's really going to be making things very clear for you let's say we have a car manufacturer kia uh, you know and they take care of the staff you know very good keeps the customer happy very good adhere to local authorities you know let's say you ensure that you know all the norms the traffic management norms or the norms for manufacturing are clearly met and they you know you demonstrate environmental stability which or sustainability which is like the hybrid or electrical vehicles are being manufactured on the face of it companies really acting in the interest of the stakeholders while making a healthy profit is a good example of stakeholder theory in action however while the organization may believe it is behaving responsibly there is much more to consider not least the stakeholders which cannot speak such as environment and natural resources within it so we don't know what we don't know so some thoughts to act responsibly you know on the face of it you may get to see a question wherein everything is hunky dory everything is very smart but you may have to think out again i'm just trying to give you some some pointers over here which you may carry in the exam that you know you may have to answer it or you have to mention it in a way that you can make examiner feel that you understand this concept of acting responsibly you are able to go behind the scenes to really check on some of the important pointers and so on and so forth for example you know do we involve the stakeholders in the decision that you make you know all do you have you know the holistic decision making wherein the workforce is being just give an example giving the workforce a choice about over, over time and ensuring that overtime worked is not excessive even if the rewards to the workforce are good and so on and so forth so you do you don't have an idea for it but you know when you talk on responsibility element you may have to challenge the organization by this logic that are you doing this or not let's say consumer you know considering human and environmental impact so for example minimizing the use of material such as rubber leather wherever possible and so that the, you know it can have you know because it it has a negative impact on our on our environment can you reduce it because you are in the car manufacturing industry many of things that you would be using is of rubber are we really looking towards that you know you are using some kind of synthetic rather than rubber can you think about it again we are just taking i've just taken an example of kia my friend there can be any number of examples but when you get to see something that just go beyond the scenes go beyond the scenes to think through that you know yes everything is being given is hunky dory but let me just uncover few things and mention to the examiner that yes these are things that one has to consider these are things that one should be thinking about and so on and so forth 
it's let's say implementing the end of life vehicle process this is this may include that you know are you re, are you recycling the old parts and so on and so forth so while the four comments that i just mentioned you know on the slide one simply mentioned that kia is really good company everything is is fine but even then when you have to suggest few things you know for from the environmental standpoint from the responsibility standpoint i have made out few things that you know yes this is something that i should be thinking about behaving in a socially responsible manner this could you know include such as diverse factors implementing environmental management schemes or even protecting clothing of workers which has been purchased from ethical and sustainable resources so for example you know most of the kia manufacturing you know manufacturing unit employees would be wearing you know a a a, a particular dress or particular uniform that dress is coming from some you know from somewhere which is an ethical and a sustainable source which is more like helping poor people and so on and so forth so you're thinking on those lines while in normally as a businessman we may not be really thinking on this those areas but nowadays the responsible leadership element is really getting into play and examiner or the uh, industry really want you to think in that direction because more you will think in that direction the better share you know shareholder satisfaction you have better people satisfaction you have and better results you give and better acceptability you have from the regulator from the shareholders and so on and so forth so very important we are going behind the scenes providing public value and addressing societal problems for example sponsoring university research program you know for more sufficient you know more safer and 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 efficient vehicles is kia doing it good you know it is a point developing a social socially responsible culture throughout the organization so that you know employees are encouraged you know to share same values of equity sustainability quality and acting in their best interest society you can also as a leader show a commitment for introducing various programs that are encouraging you know uh, let's say or somewhere removing the gender pay gaps in the organization or industry as a whole do you have any kind of you know those kind of things again you know some of these examples may not straight away come to your mind but some may right if those things really comes on to your mind you should really be having i'm just giving some examples over here take some of it and you know try if those examples becomes relevant for you in the exam because if exam would have it and you have these examples you can straight away put that across available you know so always you know behave ethically for example reporting vehicle emissions truthfully and accepting responsibility for any vehicle faults and so on and so forth so that is also you know you being responsible to the people responsible to your customers responsible to the environment and so on and so forth so responsible leadership is is everywhere you just have to go beyond the obvious beyond what is what is there you know uh, on the on the on the common ground and then take the you know uh, then take the right action in terms of you know uh, suggesting to the management suggesting to the examiner that yes these are things that one can really look forward to or these are things one should be thinking about and so on and so forth some tips you know read the question requirement first spend time on understanding your direct and indirect stakeholders very important keep highlighting the situation in relation to sustainability you would like to mention when you're reading it think about you know where where all are the areas that are you know that sustainability is going for a toss think about those lines just go beyond financial profits you know very important we are not on, not only thinking financial profits we are going beyond and in fact there are some of the areas that will be mentioned in the in the exam that will be non financial factors but just go beyond them you know only do not stuck with them all of the good factors might be given you straight away but think beyond you know very important structure it and think of conclusion be very very responsible and professional examiner loves it examiner loves it is that clear yes sir coming on to another technical article my friend i really wanted to cover these these technical articles to make sure my friend that you get the hang of it in terms of you know what that is just to make sure that you're not missing on impact uh, you know uh, not missing on some of the important aspects market segmentation is again one of the one of the examiner article on which uh, technical article on which the recent recent question came really you know really came in wherein you know you may have to do segmentation of your own business basis the market basis what you really have and that is where you know you really have to play a role of a strategic business leader to ensure that you understand this as a concept one of the important aspect to be you know in the sbl syllabus is to involve consideration of a wide range of internal external factors which influence organizational strategic business and ultimately your strategic direction which is your mission statement and that is what market segmentation is all about and market segmentation can be you know can be in a different way you know as in you may want to split the market into you know basis how you are doing in a market or basis your customer market segmentation involves splitting the market into segments and developing different strategies for those segments for example 
you know some soft drink producers manufacture some of their products specifically for diet segment so effectively uh, diet coke and and normal coke media companies can also do segmentation that you know this is more like for teenagers for old group and so on and so forth insurance company call centers use segmentation to identify type of sales scripts for different customers based on their age gender etc etc because you know they may get calls from different age retailers can do it you know uh, let's say fast running items and slow moving items the the pricing department can also do so there are different segmentation in the market that are being available you know uh, when it comes to the business or when it comes to your routine routine deliveries and on the other hand there is customer set is you know segmentation uh, you know it, it is it is more like uh, breaking the breaking the you know your customers customer base into some of the some of the groups some of the homogeneous groups per se you know, you, you break the customer for example i i may want to break the customer into uh, let's say these are the customers which are like uh, the uh, which are which are more like always into uh, uh, you know using the credit cards or these are the customers who are all like or you know all cash based customers these are the customers who are really uh you know internet savvy these are the customers who are not and so on and so forth so you can really segment your market basis your customer also because you would have a different strategy being deployed the, peop- the if i if i am able to let's say segment my customer who is who is technology savvy and segment my customer who is not i would have a different policy for both of them different strategy for both of them and so on and so forth the reason i'm talking on this is that you may get to see a question in the exam wherein you have may have to do a segmentation of the industry you are in or the case that you are in depending upon the kind of demography that you see over there and basis that the market segmentation you would devise the kind of strategy that they would need to follow for example you the types of market segmentation can be age gender income occupation nationality ethnic group you know or from the behavioral aspect you know like i said using credit card not using credit card brand loyalty frequency of product transaction behavior online shopping and so on and so forth so depending upon you know what segmentation you have you would take the you know right course of action you may have you may you can do from the geography standpoint you know as to which the customer comes from where the you know and rural urban you know india non india and so on and so forth psychographic it's more like you know <clears throat> Uh, it, it's it's more to do with you know kind of social status the personality the lifestyle you can also do the segmentation you know uh, loyalty card is one of the example you know most of for example if i am a regular flyer um, let's say of british airways and i am a gold member platinum member you know i would have have a different kind of service there you know as compared to the person who would not have that tier you know uh, with with him or her as the case may be so it really depends you know where you are and what you're doing and you know kind of segmentation you are in some of the key benefit of segmentation is that you know it's it's satisfaction of customer need very targeted communication improved focus improved competitiveness better market efficiency and has customer re- relation and i would say you know while we do all of it it effectively helps us in terms of getting more revenue uh, I, i still remember you know i used to fly uh, uh, qatar airways a lot you know when uh, i was part of black rock or bcg for that matter and most of the time you know qatar used to upgrade me from business class to first class on its own i i never requested on its own because they were using business class ticket for somebody else who was you know who who was buying business class ticket and their first class was empty so they used to push me so they've segmented me in a way <coughs> that one they can keep me happy because they're upgrading me let's say from from a business class to the first class and at the same time earn more money because they are giving that business class seat to someone else so when you do such kind of a segmentation it really helps the reason i'm talking is segmentation is again an example which got recently tested my friend where you should know that this is what you should be doing you should be suggesting the examiner that you know if you do market segmentation then you know you are effectively solving the customer need you are enhancing the customer you know customer satisfaction you are getting more revenue you are increasing somehow the focus you know on on that particular person and you're getting better efficiency also better money also and so on and so forth so very important that we have it i don't want to mention this you know because this as i said you know this recently came in so i do want to mention that you know you were being asked to prepare a briefing note for a finance director which effectively you know wherein he wanted you to assess the value of organization to undertake market segmentation analysis now you when you know this and when you have understood the 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 exam co- the exam case or the case that is being given to you it becomes hell lot easier for you that you know 
<coughs> you can tell them that you know which kind of strategy would work geography non geography behavioral non behavioral uh, you know uh, uh, it, it's online non online so uh, with what kind of question that really comes your way you know you can suggest that you know if you do this th there can be various benefits and then you can make out things onto yourself and so on and so forth advice on the most appropriate ways <coughs> in which they could segment their customers as i said when you know this it becomes hell lot easier for you so having this thing at the back of my mind can be can be a real game changer so that's the reason i wanted to bring this thing here just to make sure that you really have it at the back of your mind is that clear <clears throat> does it help guys i'm sure it does it, it it is more to do with the fact that you know we should not only know the content but we should also know that you know how the examiner has been testing us on that and how can we best address that and that's what you know we, we at fintram really focuses on to make sure that you know our sessions of course including our revision boot camp is taking into consideration what is being tested how it is being tested and what is the best way to address that in the best possible way is that clear yes sir now before we really go further i have one slide to really demonstrate in terms of you know what all are the offerings that fintram really follows and you should be looking forward to that in case you're you're coming us for the first time and of course you're seeing us for the first time For the folks who are seeing us for the first time, these are the product listings that we have. This is the support that we provide to the C for the for the ACC as well students. You can you can certainly check out our full course that comes with the with the division bootcamp. And in the full full course, what we do is that we go through each and every syllabus area, getting into the details of it. And in addition to that, you know what we also do is that we talk on all of these areas with relevant and very prevalent industry level examples. We also do the revision bootcamp where we practice how to read the exam, write the exam. We also understand the professional skills. We also understand the format. We go through the concept questions. We get onto the comprehensive or the exam standard questions, and then we also practice various past exam questions. While we do that, we also ensure you know that various exams and tips and techniques are being given to you in the best possible way. Now, this is the full course that comes with the revision boot camp for the folks who are prepared on their own and they really want to practice questions along with us and of course you know understand where the gap is. They can certainly look for our revision boot camp. That is something that will be very helpful for them. And for the folks who have not been able to clear SVL exam for whatsoever reason in the past and they need some support in terms of help that they would need in terms of excelling in the in the curriculum and of course understanding where generally generally the gaps are and how can they really you know help or you know strive through in terms of clearing the exam you know they can certainly look forward for our fast track course because fast track course essentially covers the entire entire curriculum in a very quick fashion and it also has the quotient practice sessions which is revision boot camp along with that we also offer the strategic business leader uh, memory charts which is the pictorial or the graphical description of various concepts of the strategic business leader exam that is something that is there for you to really revise the content in just like this and that would also help you memorize various important areas various important models in terms of hitting them very hard in the exam for the fintramers you know the the uh, the memory chart is coming up any which ways with the full course so you can certainly you know enjoy the benefit of it but in case somebody who wants to revise the content with the help of these memory chart that is also available as a standalone product you can just go on to our website and check on to that we have provided the details over here of of our website and of course the contact numbers you can certainly reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to support you in the best possible way with that guys any question anyone may have you know i'll be happy to happy to uh, you know uh, certainly talk and of course understand uh, and of course you know reply back if there is anything we can help you out with anybody uh, pranab shantam you're there anything that you would want us to you know or want me to answer on anything that i can really support you on with Anybody on YouTube, you know, you can really comment on any anything uh, in the comment box. Vanchika.
that is the That is, the, that is the beauty of the exam, Pranabji. We have been telling you this thing right from the start. You won't be able to question spot. It's more complex than any other past question also, what I have seen. No, no, it's not like that. You, do, you are taking it otherwise. No, absolutely not. All exams are like that only. So, you read the past, the past pre-seen material, you will have the same feel. It is not that uh, different. But every time, every time he'll, th he'll throw a different ball to you. It is, it is for you to how to, how to really, you know, uh, make that go out of the park and and we're there for that so don't worry on that just keep following the practice keep following the strategy that is being given to you so and we'll be coming with the pre scene material discussion any which ways on tuesday so uh, stay tuned for that i can understand yeah Anybody, any any doubts, any concern, guys, before we really wrap up, I just do want to give you, you know, your time for you to really ask. We have provided our numbers, our contact details. I have given my number also over here in case somebody wants to reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to pick it up. Anything that anyone has, feel, please feel free. Dheeraj is asking for SPR and FR content. Dheeraj, that will also be available in a while, so don't worry on that. That is also there. Anything? Uh, when we go through your pre-recorded videos, uh, somewhere we called it as concept question. Somewhere we called it a fast question. Somewhere we called it dipping out. Somewhere we called it dipping paper. Sometimes we called uh, uh, it is a, uh, what you can say, Concept questions are not past exam questions, Pranabji. I don't know where you're mixing that. Concept questions are only to strengthen your concepts, you know, particularly in the area of SBL. So it is not past exam questions. Then we move on to comprehensive questions, which are like more detailed ones, which will give you a very different... Those are like one of the exhibits that you would see in the exam. And then you move on to the past exam questions. There is a logical sequence that has been given and that has been spoken on into the Division Bootcamp too. Probably what is happening, uh, Pranab, is that you are not going on from, you know, sequentially. If you go on from the first session to the last session, you will understand the sequence that is to be followed and why it is the way it is. So follow that sequence. I'm sure, you know, you would, you would not have that confusion. Okay. Sh Shantam, anything from your side before we wrap up? Vanchika? No. Sashank, anything? Rahul, all right, if there is nothing guys, you know, thank you very much for joining in. I hope, I hope, sorry, tomorrow 4.30. No Pranav, we cannot, you know, time is 4.30, but recordings will be available to you. 4.30 evening. Recordings of these sessions will be available to you. Okay. And today's is also available? Yes, that will also be available. So it will automatically come to our... Uh, yes, it will it'll be sent to you. Okay. Okay. Alright guys, thank you very much for joining in. I'll see you there in the next one. Tomorrow, 4.30 p.m. and you know, we'll be taking this forward. I'll see you there. Thank you very much.